Hello there, YouTube. This is Zoo Tycooner Steve. Welcome you back to episode 26 of our Let's Play in Zoo Tycoon 2, um, where once again we're working in our African Safari area. We've only got two little slots left before we have to cross the river south and begin a whole new area. And so I wasn't really sure what I was going to put in this outside area here, but I've had a, I'm not sure if it's a couple different people or if it's one person that's just kind of been consistently asking me to put in a little aviary with one or two animals. Um, and I thought what I would do um, is go ahead and make this into a walkthrough area, uh, a walkthrough aviary. Um, it's going to feature, I think, three different species. Um, I wanted to do this one because I do consider this kind of a tutorial, um, this series kind of a tutorial for people who just kind of want to get inspired for Zoo Tycoon 2. It's something that I really like doing. And I haven't demonstrated exactly how to do a walkthrough aviary in any of my... Uh, earlier Let's Plays, obviously, or any of my How to Make It exhibits. So I wanted to... Well, until the sound effects aside, so I wanted to show off how to do that. Um, now, the parts I'm going to be using from the aviary come from Ruben and Sophie's designs. I know I've recommended them before. I'm pretty sure that they're... Uh, I'm pretty sure that they're available. Or I, that I have a link to it down in the comment box. Although I'm not 100%, so don't quote me on that. Um, if I don't, I'll try to remember and put it down there, because I really should. Uh, they have just an excellent site. So what I'm going to do here first is just going to go ahead and get the area kind of cleared out here, and then I'm going to smooth out the ground so I have a nice flat surface. Uh, remember, we raised up the path here so you can get a better look at our hyenas and lions. But now I'm going to want... my aviary a nice solid flat ground here and okay I think that's gonna be pretty good okay so let's get started here and the first thing I'm actually gonna do is just kind of build a pathway for the aviary um, just a pathway, like I said, it's going to be a walkthrough one. Uh, so essentially what it's going to be in actual fact is we're going to have two exhibits with a path that cuts between them. Um, that's just how it has to work here. Let's pick our tile for the inside of the aviary. Um, something like this dead wood path, so it looks kind of foresty, I think, maybe. So something like do to do. Um, let's make the first entrance area a little straight. And then we'll just kind of curve a path. Um, no, I don't quite like that. Um, too close there. And let's see how where this needs to end. It needs to end something like there. Alright, something like that. We might tweak it slightly. Um, but yeah, so basically we're gonna have a area here and this larger area we're probably gonna put like two birds here and one bird here. I've already got the birds selected, the ones I'm going to use. Um, but let's go ahead and put down the cage area first, which is what I recommend. Um, just finish moving this area out here as much as I can. Uh, like I said, I'm using the things, uh, th I'm using the fences from Ruben and Sophie's designs. So the first thing we're going to want to do is put the outer fence, which, uh, just to make sure I'm using the right ones, we'll go ahead and select the doo -doo -doo. Oh, I went past it. Ah, there it is. It's Aurora Designs. Sorry. Nope, no, it's not. Oh, I'm sorry. Aurora Designs is the people that do the. Um, they do the. Uh, I can't think of the name for it. The, the Radical Remake. There we go. Aves, aviaries, there we go. 
that's the one for moving the cell pieces right here. And I want it to be fairly high, so let's start with a 5, I think? Well, how big is the entrance? Let me check that first. Alright, so... Uh, yep, still staying in aviaries. Here is the entrance. And of course, the effect of this is, if you choose to go around our African house, you are going to have to go through the aviaries, because I don't have room to uh, make a wraparound path. Like I said, this wasn't, or, or like it should be obvious if you've been watching this series, this wasn't pre-designed, so I don't really have much areas. Whoops. Not there, because they're kind of messed up our pathway, so we'll do it here. Nope, that was the place it just messed up, so we'll do it here. Mm, still kind of tweaked it. I think it's because it's close to that fence there. Um, let's see if we can just smooth it out. If not, it's not a huge problem. I think we can just live with it, but... Yep, yeah, I can just fix it like that. Perfect, 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 perfect. Okay. And so that's the chain link entrance. So what I'm going to want to do is grab the equal size chain link fence. Let me switch back to fences here. Uh, looks like that's actually a four high. Yeah, that's good. All right, so we'll just wrap around here. Um, yeah, we can build this right to the edge, I think. Zoop to do to do, zap do to do, zoop to do to do. And so we will tweak that pathway a little bit so it's not so dead on. Um, I'm going to kind of keep the funky ground here just because it's going to push me to making a little more of a uh, interesting design for our aviary instead of just a box. When I say that though, um, now I'm having to think. Do we want a flat roof aviary or do I want a domed aviary? I do kind of want a domed aviary, so let's change that. And we'll tweak that for a moment. Um, basically, the domed aviary, the difference is I have to kind of have a perfect, like, rectangle. I can't have those zigzags. And you'll see why in a moment, I think. And we need to change our entrance here a little bit. Um, oops. That's right, that's the non-curved version. Let me grab the curvy version. Doo -doo -doo. Uh, safari path with curves. Of course, that didn't curve it at all. Oh, I, I need to expand it. It acts like it wants to curve. Is it this one that actually has curves? Nope. Oh, well, I'm not going to kill myself over it. Um, yeah, I still need to know what I'm going to put in here. Kind of interesting. Um, but moving on, uh, focusing on the aviary. Let's smooth this ground. Or do I want this high? Let's make this all higher. Yeah, like that. And then we can dig out a trench if we need to for whatever we put in there. Uh, okay. And finish up this path here. Find my dead wood. And 
put in like a little wider area here, maybe. I don't want to get all my smooth curves, I think. And I don't know if I'll be able to achieve that or not, but... Yeah, I'll leave that a little bit wider. I'm okay with that. Okay. So then what you have to do is, once again, using the Ruben and Sophie design, uh, we need to grab the black border path, which should be under aviators, I think. Yeah, there we go. So we're going to put this black border path right against our pathway. that. Okay, so if you look at it on the map, you can see what we've actually done is create two different pens with a pathway walking through it. That's actually our goal here. Alright. So now let's start making some aviator. Oh, let's put in, um, no, I'll save the roof to the end so I don't have to bother looking through it. Um, bother looking through a, uh, screen fence the entire time. Uh, so what animals are we putting in? Well, we're going to put in, like I said, three animals. I think I've been able to find them all. I'm going to use the uh, Carmine Bee Eater, the Southern Guinea Fowl, and the Southern Ground Hornbill right here. Uh, the Helmeted Guinea Fowl, I'm sorry, not the Southern Guinea Fowl. Helmeted Guinea Fowl. Uh, they are all African natives, so they will fit fine in our area. Uh, this one's a temperate grassland, and I believe the Helmeted Guinea Fowl is savanna. And I believe that the, um, I believe that the bee eaters are savanna as well. So we'll probably put the Helmeted guinea fowl and the bee eaters in the same area. Yeah, these are tropical savanna animals. So which one is the larger one? Um, well, it's not overly obvious, actually. Uh, I do think this is the larger one, though. Maybe not. Oh well. It's going to be plenty big enough for some beaters and some guinea fowls, though. So we'll go ahead and put that in. And let's make this nice and livable for our guinea fowls. Um, I believe they do take a nested box. Yep. So we'll put in uh, probably two nested boxes, just so our guests can easily see the guinea fowls. One up close to the path, and then we'll put one towards the back, so we'll have a little more privacy. That's kind of cool. Uh, for food, I believe they eat pretty much the same things. Yeah, I'm um, going to use the water dish that we get from... That comes from the Aves Pack by Dinosaur Man, if I'm not mistaken. So a water dish, uh, put down some general fruit. Probably put down a second water dish just in case. And I believe they're also... yep. They're omnivores, they do eat bugs. So we're just going to scatter them like that. And let's go ahead and get some foliage in. Uh, probably going to end up making this higher. So. That may be a... Uh, Throw 
down a rain tree like that. Um, don't want to do too much. Let's go ahead and switch to grasses then. Uh, our African daisy is probably going to do a lot of this with the savanna grass. Or the Uganda? I thought I had just like... Uh, Oh, I have three different height Uganda grasses. Don't I have three different height savanna grasses? Oh, I have tall savanna grass, short savanna grass, and savanna. Yes, I do. Okay. Ah, a red fountain grass, which I love too. Uh, okay. Do do. -do. Savannah, there we go. And a regular. Huh, the little complications with our uh, pathways might have actually worked out because it uh, made the terrain kind of uneven and more like lifelike, so I'm, I'm kind of happy with that. And the short savanna grass. Oh, that's more tall. I want the shorts. Savanna, tall savanna. I thought we discovered the short savanna grass. Oh no! Is that it? Yep. Yeah, and throw in some rocks here. Oop, too big. Too full. Just right. And I'll probably take some of those small ones too. Kind of make it look like a little formation cropping out here. Something like that. Okay, um... So that's going to be good for our guinea fowl, but like I said, they're going to share some space with our bee eaters. So let's make sure we can accommodate them as well. And I think they're back this way, if I remember correctly. Yes, I did look them up. Uh, if I can't find them right away, I know they're also part of the A's pack. There they are. Southern Carmine bee eaters, exactly where I expected them to be. And I don't think they have any special foods that I haven't already been taken care of. Um, they are a little bit more insectified. So let's go ahead and drop down one of these logs here so I can make sure they have a little more extra to eat. Right up there by the path I think it's going to be good. And we'll recover that with short savanna grass. <laughs> uh, anything interesting they like? They need. Homes. I don't think they have a shelter in particular. Nope, nope. What about entertainment for our birds? Um, we'll put down a couple of little feeder rats. Um, and I didn't check the entertainment. Uh, okay, instead of switching back and forth, let me put down the bee eaters. Then I'll go and check what the guinea fowl need for entertainment objects. That way I'm not constantly switching back and forth. Um, Alright. And these guys are so tiny and cute, too. And they're a real pretty bird. I've never seen one in uh, real life, but I've seen pictures. They are very pretty, because they have that like red top with blue under underneath the wings. Um, and like they got little blue helmets too. You can probably see it. Let me zoom in instead of just describing it. Let me show you. Oop, too much. We're over in the lions. Curse you, lag! Like I said, they're real tiny. But uh, we'll get a better look at them once we're on the path. Or uh, in guest mode. What you won't need as much help to see are the. Helmeted guinea fowls. They're a much bigger bird. Um, right there. And you can see them right there. They also have a blue head. Um, so I guess this is not just the savannah side, but it's the side for birdies with blue heads. And we'll put in a couple females too.
And I'm wondering now, since we are going to be doing this as two different environments, if maybe I should switch to a glass display. I'm thinking. Hmm. You know what? Let's see if these guys can actually tolerate a uh, savanna area. Um, you might not know that about Zoo Tycoon 2, uh, but even though like this is a grassland animal, typically most animals have a biome that they're happiest in, and then also a biome that they tolerate. Um, grassland, a lot of them tend to tolerate. But let's see if we can put in the southern ground hornbill into a savanna environment, and if it's still happy with that. Uh, and if it is, fantastic. We don't need to worry about putting in glass or anything. So let's drop down a tropical savanna here. And I would think they'd be fine with it, um, just because they do live sort of in that same... Well, they don't live in the savanna, I guess. They live further south. That's hence the southern ground hornbill. Um, yeah, their area is definitely sub-Saharan. Uh, definitely they're more like, well, south and towards the, uh, east, it looks like. But we'll give it a shot. We'll see how it goes. Um, first of all, let's go ahead and put up a perch for them. And their food supplies. Uh, I believe they're also omnivorous. Yes, sir. So I'll put down a couple of the fruits. Uh, we'll probably put down some bugs. And also, of course, we want to use their water feeders. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put down actual meat. So let's just stick with the bugs. Oh, and... um. Let's make an entrance for our zookeepers, too, how about? <laughs> That's a good idea. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and grab this as a, like, a three high. Something like that we can come back to in a second. And we want to do it for this side as well. Um, yeah, we'll just put it right here. Very cool. Um, let's check what kind of housing our hornbills need. I don't think they're den dwellers, but I mean, they might need some kind of elevated nest. Well, they are a ground hornbill. I guess they might be den dwellers. Nope, they prefer the nest box as well. Um, one there. And one a little further back, like the other side. Very cool. Trees, I'm going to guess different because they're technically grassland, but uh, we'll just go ahead and copy and get more of these Sakai trees in here. And we'll put another one here so they're kind of overlying the path. I think that's going to look cool. Um. Again, just kind of even them up. Um, yeah, once again, we'll do rocks. Uh, whoops. Again, they're pulling up grassland rocks. Go ahead and make sure we also kind of uh, fill up this area so our guests aren't looking directly at the backside of the reptile house. Uh, same thing's going to be true over here. We're probably going to want to 
plant some trees down there just to kind of block off the area. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, they kind of look more like bushes than trees, but I'm okay with that in that area. Um, do to do, do. All right. Uh, yeah, let's put in our southern hornbill and give them a second to see if they can tolerate that savanna area. And if they can, we'll go ahead and bother to put down like the savanna grass and all that. Um, but let's not go further without at least testing that first. And you can see that these are kind of a bigger bird as well. At least you can see them easily. And across the way from the blue-headed birds was the land of the red-headed birds, and war was between them always. Uh, if you want to see a really cool uh, Southern Ground Hornbill exhibit, uh, if you look at uh, Zoo Master Ben's channel, I believe that's the correct name for it, he put up a really cool one a few months back that I highly recommend. Uh, I get a lot of inspiration from him, so I always recommend his channel whenever I can. Uh, but let's unpause and see how our ground hornbills like it. And so what we're going to be looking for is their biome here. And it always takes a second. Um, so biome satisfied, space satisfied. Very cool. So yeah, they can, like I said, they're ground, uh, they are a grassland animal, but they're perfectly happy in a savanna environment, so... No reason to put them in, or and that's good because now I don't feel the need to um, like separate it by making them both glass enclosures, which you could do if you don't want to put down the uh, footpath. Just put down some grass enclosures, so it looks like you're walking in the middle of like an aquarium. Uh, that's how I would do things if I was say um, trying to make a walk through shark tunnel or something like that. Uh, which, there really isn't a great version of a shark tunnel in Zoo Tycoon 2. No one seemed to master that, because you could never get the water to go over your path. Um, so unfortunately, you kind of have to have two separate tanks, just like this. But, um, oh well, que sera, sera. I was going to put a spirit tree there, but I think it would be too obvious that they're kind of close together, those two kind of spirit trees. So. There we go. Throw that down. And let's go ahead and grab some of this taller savanna grass. And instead of just having it all towards the back, I'm going to move it up front on this side here so it looks a little less... a little less uh, hand manicured, a little more natural. And grab some short savanna grass. Beautiful. Uh, let's worry about the roof, okay? So again, uh, Ruben and Sophie Designs, please go there for all these things. And you're going to notice that they have, like, pre-constructed roofs, which just kind of float in the air, and they're a little bit higher than what I have now, so I'll probably have to make a higher pathway. Um, let's see, the easiest way to do this is just to... Where is... yeah, okay, I don't know if this is big enough for that or not. Let's see if we can use the pre-made ones, or we can have to custom build. We well, might be able to use the pre-made ones. We just have to bend the corners a little bit, I think. I forgot that those things were bent, so yeah, let's use this and kind of conform our cage to that then. Now it doesn't quite line up to the right side, so we'll just go ahead and uh, kind of custom build. So what 
I'm going to do is put in four corners here. And I might have to cheat the entrance in a little bit to make that work, but that's okay. We can do that. Yeah, I'll probably have to bend the pathway in. That's fine. So you get to see me go back and do some corrections. Of course, this is not corrections to mistakes, but learning opportunities for you people, of course. Uh, was that right? Yeah, that was a little bit off. One more corner like that. There we go. Okay, let me make some corrections so that the roof will line up correctly. And we should have a wonderful, wonderful aviary. I did pick the right aviary height, if it makes you feel good. So what we're going to do here is sort of delete our fencing. Do -do -do. I don't want to get rid of the grass, I just want to get rid of the fence. And then we'll have to lay our black borders down around the outside of this area. Okay, it's going to be much easier if I just make the trees disappear for a second. Okay. Don't fight against the tide. And I realize this is a little confusing. Um, basically, I, uh, I've changed my mind exactly how I wanted to do this. So I'm getting rid of the actual, like, aviary fence that we put up. And I'm just using the uh, scenery fences that, are, again, they still come from Ruben Sophie's Designs. Uh, that hasn't changed. Uh, but the main difference is that... Let me pick you up. Uh, where's the hole for this guy? Oh, that's right. Okay. So we'll have to alter this a little bit. We're going to end up shrinking this cage, basically, is what we're going to end up doing to make ourselves happy. Totally worth it. Alter this path, alter this... Just a little bit. Just to make me happy. Okay. So, what we'll do then... Let's go ahead and reclaim our path. to move that log by a little bit. Just like that. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Working great. It's exactly how I wanted it. Um, all right. Mm. Ooh, one too many. And hopefully I did make that the right length. I think I did. Yes, okay, I did make that the right length. Fantastic. <laughs> Woo! 
I was gonna have to stop and start recording again if I messed that up. All right, so I'll just put these in here. Do do do. The weird thing is I don't see the screen panel. I just see the screen entrances. Um. So what we're going to do here is... Oh no, that's fine because we're going to make the entrance over here. So these are the trees that I need to get gone. And real quick again, we're going to bend the pathway once more to make ourselves happy once again. This is probably the biggest mess up I've made. Not that I make mess ups, but this is probably the biggest mess up I've made since I started uh, this Let's Play. <laughs> um, I don't know why I was thinking that I would build it the other way, because I just really prefer the way this roof looks, um, basically. It's the reason I'm going through all this. <laughs> and I don't think it's going to be too much of a headache. Although it is going to be a little bit of a headache. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no way to make that disappear. That's okay. And I'm aware my southern current mines are not technically in a fence right now. All right, so I need to go through and fill in the areas. Ooh. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't have that, like, same type of fence. Four high. Maybe this is it. Nope, that's not quite the same fence either. There we go, that's the one I want. Alright, and let's take the time to flatten this area out so it'll fit nice. Do do do, okay. And I need to put one right here as well. Okay, and now I also need to grab that black bar. Now once this is done, okay, so essentially it's not a uh, even though it looks like a fence, it's not a fence that I put up around there. It, uh, it's just kind of a statue is the way the game reads it. So what we're going to do is put this black border fence underneath the statue, and that way the game will treat it as an actual fence. That's why you need the black border one. And I said I'd like to think of these things as a tutorial. Don't use this as a tutorial. This was a terrible tutorial. Uh, I'm sure if you check out the Ruben and Sophie page on, Zutaku, on, uh, on YouTube, they probably have a much better tutorial of how to use their stuff. They made it, they know how to use it. Listen to them. Don't listen to me, I'm an idiot. Uh, <laughs> but we'll get it done here. And it's gonna totally be worth it. So you see, the areas that weren't covered uh, by the statue area, I'm using this aviary wall, and the areas that are covered by the statue, I just use the black border. 
think I've used this black border before. I think I used it as the outline for the duck pond. Way, way back when we were still working in Farmville. I guess I really shouldn't call it that since Farmville's like a trademark thing, but way, way back, many centuries ago. Just slightly after the dinosaurs. Zoom in so I'm underneath. Ha ha! Okay. And you're now on the path, so let's move you a bit. And we want to check for things like that, since we did change the path up. And black borders for the whole thing. Okay, very good. Very cool. And let's go ahead and alter this okay so we've got a little area we can put something in here maybe yeah we can probably put a small like little display back in there so we've got a whole new just when I thought they were out they pull me back in so um, just for my sanity, let's go ahead and mark out the two new sections we ended up making back here, so I know exactly what I'm talking about in the future. Um, so we still got that, the extension from our African house there, and we got this little area here. We can put in something snappy if we want to. Oop. That's not what I wanted. There we go. So now I've still got the animal to put in here to finish our animal house and probably put something else like right across here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling okay with that. But let's go ahead and finish up our aviary today. So it's going to be this little kind of zigzaggy path. Oh, I need to finish the path on the other side too which is going to be kind of crammed in here, but I'm okay with it. Um, oop, not quite like that. piece of reptile house is actually overhanging more than it needs to. Let's trim that. It's one of those things I really wouldn't care about. I didn't have to have the path come right up against it. Alright, and one thing we else we need to do is go ahead and alter or make an uh we still need to make an entrance for our zookeepers. So we're going to have to have one into the Southern Hornbill and one into the Crested Guinea Fell area. And I always think I'm going to have a shorter episode and it always ends up being like 45 minutes to an hour. So I'm never going to worry about that again. right up again. Ooh, not that. All right, and... Oh, I don't have to delete the outer fence thing. Oh, once again, my inability to plan has shot me in the foot. Um, oh, that's okay. I can do it over here. Real quick. This is why when I'm, like, doing this not on the record, I usually build something three or four times. But since I'm recording this... I kind of feel like I have to be honest. Oh, 
that's right, there's actually a black path there, so what we'll do is just switch it real quick. That'll work fine. And let's make sure we put a roof on that so the birds can't fly out if they accidentally get into there. Um, yeah, this works. You can really see that one. It doesn't quite line up, does it? Must be uneven ground in there. Still. Yeah, that's weird. Even though they're both um, Ruben and Sophie designs, it doesn't look like it quite lines up. Uh, let's see if we can't kind of cheat it then with a... thicker wrap around here. I said thicker, darn it. Oh, that's right, it's uh, aviary can't, it doesn't count as an actual fence. Uh, you know what, it's kind of going along, let's not dwell on this over much. Um, it does kind of look weird, doesn't it? I guess it's just because you can't see from a from a big height, you can't see the chain link on them, so it kind of looks weird. Uh, <laughs> that's okay though. Uh, we'll put in a similar thing over here for these guys, and once again, I'll have to alter the fence for that. Um, uh, it's 47 minutes in. What I'm going to do is unpause. I'm going to walk through it, let you show it off, and then I'll do the final alterations at the beginning of the next episode. Deal, deal. All right, let's drop down here and take a look at our nice walk through aviary, though. Uh, obviously, we're going to need to start by smoothing out this path a little bit. Um, I'll go in here. And whoops, I still didn't turn the trees and stuff back on. Let's do that so we can get the fact of it. <laughs> I'll at least give you that. All right. So we'll go through here. I uh, still don't know what the animals are going to be on that side. Yeah, and I'll need to go through things and, like, move that grass out of the center of the path. But if we look to our right here, you can see our helmeted guinea fowls. And our beaters down the path a little further. And there are our hornbills. And you can see it's a kind of a nice overall look to it. Um, yeah, there are beaters down there. And they're pretty happy, it seems like. Um... I obviously need to... Looks like I need to do a little work in our reptile house to make them happy. Oh, and I left a tree in the middle of the pathway. Okay. So, come back next time for episode 27, when we'll do... At least start with part two of uh, getting our aviary up to snuff. Uh, I hope you enjoyed at least this part here. Um, of course, now I have two displays left. Uh, probably going to be smaller animals, just because I had to bisect that, but... If you do have any suggestions, any ideas, any comments, please do them below. Um, I'll try to get to the next one fairly quick, so you can get the uh, finished results from the aviary very quickly. Uh, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it inspires you to do some zoo tycooning. And as always, if you like the video, please like, comment, and subscribe below. Thank you so much, and have a great day.